61A, lecture number 25, announcements. Classes on campus were canceled today, so this will be a video-only lecture. I've also extended Homework 6's deadline to Friday instead of Thursday to give you one more day to work on the homework. This homework is short, but it's in a new programming language called Scheme, which we'll learn today in lecture. The best way to learn a programming language is to see a few examples and then write examples on your own. And that's what this week's lab is for. It's posted already, and you're welcome to work through it on your own, but it's even better to come into lab so that you can ask questions about the scheme language as you try it out. Anyone who had a Monday lab and wants to attend lab even though Monday labs were canceled can come on Tuesday or Wednesday. The midterm two exam is graded. Here are solutions and the exam itself. You should have received an email from Gradescope with your graded exam already if you took it. If you did take the exam but did not receive an email, please let us know on Piazza and we'll track down what happened to your exam. And I do encourage you to read over the exam and how it was scored. If you see anything that you think was graded incorrectly according to the rubric, please submit a regrade request by next Monday. So like I said, we're starting on a new programming language today and a new unit in the course. You now know how to program in Python. You know about functions and objects and how they interact. You can go out and build stuff right now. There's more to learn about Python, of course. You can learn what the standard library does, all of the built-in modules. But there's actually very little to learn about the syntax of the language or its behavior that you don't already know. So we're going to move on to something else. Early on in the course, we studied functions and higher order functions and recursion. Now we'll look at a programming language that encourages a functional programming style. In functional programming, not only do you define and call a lot of functions, including higher order functions, but you try to avoid any kind of assignment or mutation. So, in this programming language that you're about to learn, there will be no for statements or while statements because those require assignment. Something has to be changing in the body of while, or the loop will never end. Functional programming instead uses recursion to achieve the same effect. And some people love this. Some people don't love it so much. But I will tell you that learning to program in a functional style is an effective way to become a better programmer in general, regardless of what programming language you use in the future. And variants of the programming language scheme, which are in a family called Lisp, are still used heavily today, both for general application programming and also as embedded languages within other programs so that part of a large program might be written in C++ and another part of it in Lisp. This kind of thing can happen for all kinds of reasons, but the property of Lisp that makes it happen is that you can build anything. It promotes a functional programming style, and the language is really simple. You can learn the whole language in just one lecture. Here we go.